pass. Please take a moment to silence your cell phones. Be sure you have both a hymnal and a worship aid.
Let the church say amen. amen. Let the saints of God say amen. amen. We greet God as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather on this holy night to begin these central three days, the Tritium, we do so with the entire church around the globe. During these next days, we commemorate the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. This past week at the cathedral downtown in Kansas City, the holy oils were blessed and distributed to all parish churches. The oil of chrism, the oil of the sick, and the oil of catechumens. Tonight as we sing together the glory to God, we receive these holy oils which will be used in the celebration of the sacraments here at our parish throughout the coming year. Let us pray. God, you call us to participate in this most sacred supper. 
in which your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity. In this banquet of his love, grant that we may draw the fullness of charity and of the life from this great mystery. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread and, after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Lord be on my thoughts. Lord be on my lips. Lord, live in my heart. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. Jesus loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, Fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, Jesus rose from supper and took off his garments. He took a towel and tied it round his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel round his waist. Jesus came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to Jesus, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. 
Simon Peter said to Jesus, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus said to Peter, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over, as you are clean, but not all. For Jesus knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, Jesus said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do the Gospel of the Lord. Thank you for coming out on this Holy Thursday night, the beginning of the Tritium. Remember, I've said it before, Jesus walked this earth for 33 years, and the Catholic Church has squeezed it all down to 365 days. And each year about this time, we come back around to these readings to help us remember who we are and whose we are. So tonight, Jesus celebrates his last meal with his friends. Tonight, he has clothed himself with a towel. Tomorrow night, he will be clothed as a fool and then stripped naked. The hour has come the hour of Jesus' love for his own to the very end, the hour when his Father had given all things into his hands. Jesus tells us what these things are tonight. A towel, a bowl of water, in the feet of his disciples. Such ordinary, humble human realities with which Jesus will show the depths of his love. Tomorrow, the salvation of the world will be put into his hands that are nailed to the wood. And on the third day, Jesus will be clothed in the glory of his risen life. So we gather here tonight to remember our role in salvation history. The description of the washing of the feet it belonged to the lowest of the low of the servants of the house. And for Jesus to do that threw some of the disciples into a tailspin. Jesus tells us today we are called to lift up all those who are shoved down. 
the abused, the marginalized, the refugees, the unemployed, those with physical and psychological disabilities. You and I, we too, are handicapped. We just can't see it because we've got it together somehow. But Jesus tells us, take care of each other. Lift each other up. And that's why tonight, in just a moment, we have the washing of the feet. But following that, Jesus returns to the table as Lord and Teacher to help his disciples understand that as I have done for you, you should do also. Symbolism. It's all around us. Tonight we begin our tritium, three sacred days. Thank you for coming out tonight. Tomorrow evening, Good Friday, the reading of the Long Passion, veneration of the cross, receiving communion, and then Saturday night, the Easter Vigil. If you've never experienced one, come on down, come be with us. It is phenomenal. We have three households, three families, who will have their feet washed to remind us all of our need to serve one another with care, respect, great tenderness. At this time, I would invite them to come forward, Fryermuth and Farrell family, Coon Fair and Gaston family, Tison and Simpson family, could you come up, please?
Father Phil, as a member of the diocesan priesthood, you have chosen to serve as our pastoral leader. Tonight, we have just witnessed through this ritual of washing of one another's feet, your commitment to serve this diocese in humility and care. We, the parishioners of Holy Family, now ask you to renew your commitment of pastoral service, however the Holy Spirit might lead you. Will you continue to serve the people of the Diocese of Kansas City, St. Joseph, by living to the best of your ability in imitation of Christ the Good Shepherd? I will. Will you be faithful in reflecting on and teaching the Word of God and in preparing us for the sacraments of our faith? I will. Will you be constant in your concern for the community's needs, especially the needs of the sick, the elderly, and the poor? I will. Will you lead by example as we try to serve one another with dignity, both locally and globally? I will. Will you work to call forth and respect the gifts of the community? I will. And now, I address you all, the parishioners of this faith community. Will you lift up in prayer and support Father Phil as your pastoral leader, regarding him as the servant of Christ and the steward of the mysteries of God? We will. I ask you to please stand and let us extend a hand of blessing over Father Phil as we pray. May the God of promise give you strength to know that God longs for you. May God fill you with joy and grant you the grace to continue to lead this community in their spiritual growth. May God order your days and your work in peace, leading you to everlasting life. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
May the example of love and service Christ gave us be recognized. May we take time to express concern for one another as we faithfully serve in Christ's name. We pray to the Lord. We remember the church. May Jesus be recognized in the bread broken and the cup poured out. May the bread and wine of compassion be given to the hungry and the desperate. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those who are afraid, afraid of being alone, afraid of risking heartbreak, afraid of dying, may they be given the courage to move forward in faith. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who will be initiated into our Catholic tradition at the Easter Vigil from our parish, from our diocese, and all over the world. May they know intimately that God has chosen them to be his own. We pray to the Lord. We bring to the Lord all people who are refugees. For the people of Ukraine, as they face the daily terrors of bombs, death, and destruction. For an end to senseless acts of violence everywhere. We pray to the Lord. We bring all who are suffering from illness of any kind. We especially pray for all the sick of this parish family, for all listed on our prayer chain. May the angels guard them and heal them. We pray to the Lord. We bring those who are suffering loss of loved ones, loss from tragedies, or illness, or age. May they find some sense of peace amidst their grief. We pray to the Lord. God, thank you for your arms that wrap around us and hold us. Thank you for lifting us when we fall. Hear our prayer, we ask this through Christ our Lord.
God, may the power of this sacrifice, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father, eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son high priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chose men to become sharers in sacred mystery through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, and to lead your people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them in the sacraments as they give up their lives for you, O God, and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to conform to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so we join the angels and saints in song. God, you are holy. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave you thanks, Father, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Again, he gave you praise and thanks, Father. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and your 
we celebrate the memorial of his passion, death, and resurrection. And we offer you, God, our Father, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us, held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Lord God, remember your church gathered here at Holy Family and all over your world. Help us to grow in charity together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. God, our Father, remember our brothers and sisters who have died. all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them home into the light of your presence. And thank you, God, for having mercy on us. And we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and saints, we too may merit eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we stand and we pray that prayer that Jesus taught us. Whose Father? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. Keep us free from sin. Protect us from daily anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. Tomorrow is not promised, but we're here today. So thank God for that saint on your left. Thank God for that saint on your right. Let us offer each other some sign of Christ's peace.
as I lift high the body and blood of Jesus Christ, I invite all of us to look upon Jesus, believe in his real presence, invite him into our hearts. Pray this prayer as if it were the last prayer of our lives. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus, who takes away the sin of the world and heals us. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb, Lord.
Please stand and let us pray. Almighty God, just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, may we also enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 